Dead in the water. That's what they're saying about the Acolyte, at least when it comes to this season. It looks like, folks, that despite every reason for Lucasfilm to abandon all hope, they're still sticking with the idea that it's just a bunch of trolls making it be half a million dislikes and counting. But where it really counts is that it's looking very much like season two went up in smoke for me and you. Hello folks, welcome back to the Pro Channel. Boy, oh boy, what a great time we have prepared for you as we continue to give journalists tomorrow's headlines handed to them on a silver platter. Folks, if you'd like to help us do so, be the gigawatts right now, right now, today. Click the like button. And folks, let's get right away to this video. We're talking about the Acolyte. We're talking about a potential already DOA status with season two, perhaps, already saying sayonara to Leslie Headland, former personal assistant to Harvey Weinstein, and Kathleen Kennedy, former barista extraordinaire. Ooh. And folks, we are going to break this exclusively right now. So let's get started. We, uh, we held you far too long. We were talking about pirates and that breaking news. We don't like to have the headline topic uh, sit there for 90 minutes before we get to it. Apologies, folks. We never intend to do that, but here we go. We received a message uh, during the late night hours, and I provided that to the uh, people at the top of, of the, that park place and the effort that we do there. And so I'm going to read this to you from my uh, uh, monitor over here to my left. I'm going to read this to everybody. Of course, you can't see that, but that's what we're doing here. And guys, Jonas, John, I think I can read this entire thing. I think we're okay. Do you guys? You yeah, guys agree word, on that? I think the word verbatim was used, so yeah. Well, you know, you always just want to be careful with it. Okay, here we go. Um, I'm, I'm going to skip the first paragraph and go down. I'm, I'm, I'm going to start in the paragraph that's after verbatim. Here we go, guys. This is what the source says. I want to say that the source is close to Lucasfilm and that I do know the identity of the source, but we will never burn a source and we're not going to do anything that could, could get their identity out there. Here's, here's the message. Leslie Headland's The Acolyte is dead on arrival. Unless there's a miracle of ratings, this is a one-and-done proposition. For now, the negative reaction for the trailer is being labeled as aggressive trolls irrelevant to the market. <laughs> However, it looks to me like John Knoll, John Knoll, that's a name that only people who are really, really following Star Wars are going to have any idea who that is, says, however, it looks to me like John Knoll is no longer going to be actively meeting with Headland to collaborate on, on a season two. And the source says they're not going to say why, even in this message to us, why they know that. So that's, that's off the table. In fact, live action Disney plus Star Wars is very quiet, matching to what it was just two years ago. Now that, to me, that's saying that, it, that it's less than it was two years ago behind the scenes. Maybe I'm not reading that exactly correctly, but that's that's what I think it's saying. We, we've we seen that with uh, Mando Season 3, right? It obviously did worse than Mando Season 2. A absolutely. And folks, we've said repeatedly here, we think Season 4 is canceled. You know, it may pop up in a year or two years, but they're not working on it. And I think we, I think we can pretty much definitively say they're not working on it. So um, going back to this note we've received, it says, uh, don't be surprised if you see the head of film development at Lucasfilm heading out the door in the next 12 months. It says speculation on the source's part, but if Kathy stays, someone else's head is going to roll so executives can lay blame, essentially saying there's a scapegoat. And the name that's given here is Max Taylor. It says Max Taylor is a nice guy. I'm assuming this is the head of film development. It says Max Taylor is a nice guy who is just the right kind of fellow to be kicked to the curb. You can figure out why says, even if Kathy were to actually exit in the next two years, who in the world is going to keep Max, that's Max Taylor, after the Ray debacle? It goes on. I'm not going to read, I'm not going to read verbatim this next paragraph. Uh, I want to be a little careful here because there's an assertion about somebody at Lucasfilm, and I can't corroborate this, so I'm not going to say exactly what it says. But it suggests that when we're covering Reimagine Tomorrow and the Disney DEI push and all of that, that something similar is happening at Lucasfilm. And it just says that uh, the name, and this I've looked into this, this is the head of DEI at Lucasfilm, 
that we should be looking into if we want to begin investigating DEI programs at Lucasfilm. So that's what we have, folks. That's the message that we received last night from a source that we believe has excellent con uh, connections. I do know the, the identity. We do not disclose it, of course. But, uh, folks, it looks like unless there is a ratings miracle, they are already prepping for uh, the Acolyte to be a one and done, one season only. And it appears that that is a change from what they had previously expected. So uh, we're at 550,000 dislikes on the trailer, not being well received. And, and I guess we're seeing some fallout already. Panelists, I'll hand it to you. Give me your thoughts on uh, this breaking revelation. I don't know who wants to go first. I'll let you guys decide. So it's just a sizzle reel is what you're telling me? Sizzle <laughs> reel, Tom, because of all of the... Uh, Never mind. Never mind. I won't explain that. But, uh, yeah, um, yeah, definitely. This is well. Talk, you know that Leslie Headland put her wife in the in the in the show, right? Uh, right, yeah, right. In the same that, way that that's uh, just Hollywood. That's just Scissor right, right. Scissor right. In the same way that uh, Victoria Alonso put her wife in uh, in uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Yeah, yeah. Uh, every Sith has uh, has an apprentice, I guess. I'd rather watch <laughs> Falcon Crest in the Winter Soldier. Yeah, and uh, apparently we won't be getting a season two of that's that either. Old. So for those of you who don't know who that's John confirmed. Knoll is, he is yes, the Yeah, chief. Jonas, explain these names to us, please. So John Knoll is the chief creative officer of Industrial Light and Magic. He is a guy who works for a living over there at uh, Lucasfilm. He is uh, also the inventor of Photoshop. Yes, that question has come up in chat. He is, he, he's the, him and his brother invented Photoshop uh, back in the day. Um, if you see that clip of of George Lucas sitting on a couch talking about, uh, I think it's talking about poetry. There's a red letter media focused on this thing of of, of George Lucas sitting on a couch in the back uh, behind the scenes from right. Phantom Menace, and he turns and he talks to somebody, and they go, "Why didn't this guy at least disagree with him? That guy was John Knoll sitting there. He's a so, long so explain Lucas this to me then, guy. Jonas. H help yeah. me understand this better because now, I mean, folks, we received this. In the early morning hours, uh, you know, we haven't had the time to go through this at the level we typically would. Jonas, why would, if this is the case, and folks, we need to also say this is rumor and speculation territory. We cannot corroborate this. We can only tell you that we've had big scoops in the past on Star Wars. You know what they are, and we get them through these kinds of sources. But Jonas, uh, why would a John Knoll, a person such as, as himself, why would he be meeting Leslie Headland if there was going to be a season two in the future? Like what, what would be going on there in that kind of a meeting? Well, uh, I can only assume at this point that you would need to talk to your main special effects house if you were going to be working on season two of the, uh, uh, of the series based on the most well-known special effects franchise of all time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that would be a good assumption. Gotcha, okay. Now, I'd like to look at the other name mentioned, and it's fascinating. Guy Max Taylor? Max Taylor, yes. Have you looked up his bio? I just did, because I'd never heard of him. He's vice president of live action series development at Lucasfilm, primarily focused on developing scripted content for Disney platforms and providing creative support. Now, prior to joining Lucasfilm, he spent four years at Paramount Television as a vice president most recently, where he managed the development of upcoming series such as, see if you've seen or heard of any of these actually happening, Pentaram, Time Bandits, Station Eleven, Snow Crash, and Sexy Beast, as well as the production of series Catch-22, Briarpatch, Boomerang, and Shooter. He was also tasked with facilitating series development of Paragraph, Paramount legacy properties such as Galaxy Quest, he never made a series of that, Spy Who Came In From The Gold, uh-uh, Event Horizon. Uh uh. Before that, he was scripted television at Endemol Shine Studios, where he supported series The Bridge, Grace Point, and Utopia. Before that, he was a creative executive at Xbox, developing the series Humans to help explore television opportunities with Halo and Gears of War. And he started as at Bad Robot as an assistant and an agent trainee in motion pictures. Did any of that ever really happen or happen in any way that? Made no, and, and even worse, the Halo and Ge uh, Gears of War stuff uh, never, while he was there, materialized in anything. And Microsoft desperately, desperately, back in the heyday of Halo, wanted it to be well, multimedia. It should be. It's, it's a big hit, isn't it? 
Uh, was, was. So, so I mean, what's he still doing anything? I mean. So, I, so okay. Well, here's Abrams, a, bad robot. There you go. Yeah. yeah he's here's a question then. So, let, so let's jump into speculation for a moment. If Kathleen Kennedy stays, and we don't know that that's going to happen, but if she does get an extension on the contract past October, which would be a monumental disaster. But again, I think that also depends on Pelts. I mean, I really, really do. And, and I'm not saying even, even if Pelts wins. If Pelts continues the proxy fight and he keeps ISS on his side and he has Jay Rasul and he says, hey, guys, I'm going for four board seats now and I'm going to impact the succession plan. That might put pressure on, on someone like Bob Iger to not keep Kathleen even more than if Pelts gets on the board. So I'm, I'm not saying that I'm not saying that one way is a disaster, but if Kathleen Kennedy were to remain at Lucasfilm, I think this source is right. Whether or not the details are right, somebody has to take the fall. They're not going to let the Acolyte and the Ray movie situation, and oh, by the way, season three of The Mandalorian was just awful. They're not going to let that touch Kathleen. Somebody is going to take the fall for all of this to keep her legacy in the minds of the people who don't follow this closely enough to keep that uh, uh, sanctified and because she is an icon for women in Hollywood. And she's the one that hired Leslie during a hi hiring freeze, right? Yeah, yes, exactly. So, so it, And, and, and Leslie says that. Leslie says she yeah. pitched directly to Kathleen Kennedy. I'll go even farther. She tells it, Leslie Headland has said that she pitched Frozen in Space to Kathleen Kennedy, and Kathleen Kennedy's first response, whether it's a joke or not, I don't know, but Kathleen Kennedy's alleged first response was, so you want to put a singing snowman in Star Wars? And she <laughs> still hired her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, 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 and the obvious question is, if KK did leave, this guy wouldn't be the one that they brought up. So he's very, very expendable. Uh, <laughs> I hate to say that. I don't know him. He may be a swell guy, but. Uh, uh, the source says he is. Source says he's a nice guy. Yeah, so well, guy. well, do we heard that about the guy directing the uh, uh, Hawaiian doings in Vancouver, too? And I'm sure they're on it, too. You know, it feels like so are they all, all honorable men from Julius Caesar, you know? A exactly. whole bunch of nice guys with no accomplishments going on around here, or few accomplishments, let's put it that way. Right, oh, and John, I'll, I'll feel, point feel out his... Uh, go ahead, John. Uh, I mean... Is anyone surprised that uh, the show is going to be dead on arrival? I don't think that's really surprising. Um, I mean, look at the, I think people are posting in the chat. It's like oh, the dislikes now are over 545, 100,000 dislikes. Uh, that's absolutely massive. Um, I mean, we're seeing, I, we don't know the total viewership for the Mandalorian obviously went down, but we're seeing like X-Men 97 only had 5 million or uh, excuse me, 4 million people tune in over the first five days. That's what, that's what Disney is reporting to Variety. Uh, we're talking about over half a million people disliking the, the, the trailer just on YouTube. I mean, how many other people didn't one, even hit the dislike button? I mean, it's huge. It's massive. One, one more thing about that trailer and its role. Remember, when these things, when they decide, oops, we made a mistake and pulled the plug, the first thing they cut is advertising and publicity that they didn't want to do on a loser, right? We've seen that with the big features that they've realized are going to be dead. Well, this is, if in theory, the best foot forward they could put for this show as far as advertising and publicity. And it didn't work in a massively embarrassing way. So you're darn right it's dead on arrival. And they won't spend much more on that if they've already made that decision. And nothing about this show is in the real world of movies where we actually count people buying a seat and buying some popcorn because it's all about driving subscriptions to Disney Plus. Right. Uh, and and well, it ain't gonna. I'll, I'll also point out that uh, with the Acolyte versus, say, Skeleton Crew, which it looks like Skeleton Crew has been pushed into the next fiscal year, which means that it, it could still come out after, what, September 30th of this year, uh, that Acolyte... Um, I'm, I'm going to point out something about the show, and I'm going to be vague, but uh, I find myself very clever. Acolyte is, uh, is a higher priority alphabetically to the Walt Disney Company, and they really like their alphabet people over there at the uh, the Walt Disney Company. I don't think that they're going to fully pull the advertising for Acolyte because that's the only Star Wars thing that's coming out here that they can they can brag about. 
uh, at the moment, and they need they need it to look like something is happening with Star Wars. But but and, here's here's the question: Where do they advertise? If they advertise it on Disney Plus, swell, they'll get people who already have a subscription at that point to watch. But that doesn't grow the subscription roster. It might actually lose some because they get fed up and say, "That's it, I'm done." Right, and and obviously, uh, if we're if we're taking a poll, uh, Lucasfilm viewership on Disney Plus is negatively correlated to Disney Plus uh, subscribers. Yes, so the higher yes. the subscriber count goes, the lower the viewership on on uh, Disney Plus uh, Star Wars series. Is correlation is not causation. I think I think the the causation is lack of interest, and and they're just not connecting with the people who are showing up for Star Wars. There is a there is a niche audience that is very pleased that they're spending two hundred million dollars a series on these things, but that is a. It would be more appropriate to spend a CW amount of money on a production like this as opposed to Star Wars money. And and we might also point out that with all this other budget shifting they're doing, trying to get stuff out of the D plus budget and onto the features or anywhere else, this one's paid for already, gang. Or rather, the loan they took out to make it is out there, and they can't change. Right, and and oh. and and we're very much looking forward to. We should know very soon just how much money they spent on the acolyte. So uh, pay attention here uh, on on the WDW Pro Channel, and of course over on that park place and on Valiant Renegade. And we're done. Wrap it up, folks. We are out of here. Hope you had a great time. We had a great time sharing it with you. An attitude of gratitude. Every time you click on one of these videos, you make the magic happen. So folks, as you head out, like, share, subscribe, click it, stick it to the algorithms. It is the notification bell and drop a comment down, down, down below. And let us know your thoughts. Folks, wherever you are and whatever you're doing, keep learning, keep growing, and keep having fun.